sure y'all subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment, make sure y'all share, make sure y'all keep watching the videos in its entirety, okay? And support her, all right? That's it. Don't slow down for anyone, yeah. So if you got a dream, just keep going. Cause all that horror gonna put your dreams in the motion. So I'm Jalen, people call me Jet. I'm the owner of the Creative Playground. Also the owner of Jet Digital, um, Jet Detroit, and even Shop YMC. Uh, I offer modeling services to models with Jet Detroit. Jet Digital, we offer media services and the Creative Playground. I offer a studio space where people can create what they need to create. Okay, so how did you start? Uh, I wanna say I started back in 2017. I used to sell women's clothes. Uh, Young Millionaires Club, and one of my guys, he took photos. He did music, but he also took photos. And with him taking photos, it's like I had the clothes, he had the photos. So we kind of put it together. And with me selling women's clothes, it kind of went hand to hand. But when he stopped and he started pursuing music, I had to kind of use his camera to take the photos because it was like he wouldn't hit me back, he wouldn't say anything, and it was like, I needed these photos for my brand, so I kind of started taking the photos, and the girls started asking me to do things like birthday shoots. I mean, I was doing like $40 a day type shoots. So now it's, the price didn't went all the way up, but kind of me starting from clothes and expanding through then, um, I kind of built my way up on creating sets, being creative. I like helping people, so I'm deep in the community as far as empowering people to shoot, um, get better, stand on people's heads, you know, accountability, things like that. <laughs> Any advice you got for people that want to be a photographer or do the stuff that you do? Yeah. Um, one, the advice I have for people that want to be photographers is don't rush anything. I would say rushing stuff will kill you very quick. Um, very, really take your time with anything. There's no rest for nothing. Me, I'm 18 right now, so it's kind of like I was rushing a lot of stuff. If you want me to be honest, I rushed getting this space, but at the end of the day, I had to kind of adjust and just be with it. So I would say don't rush anything. Don't rush nothing you do. Take your time with everything. Another thing is don't try to be like nobody else. So when you get to let other people influence you, it's like you try to mimic them, and you cannot be like them because you aren't them. So with that being said, when you're trying to do what they do and it's not coming out the same, you may feel like you didn't do what you need to do. So I would tell you, don't be like anybody, don't rush. Um, keep a lot of stuff private. A lot of things you do private, like you have a lot of people that will leech onto you, a lot of leeches. So with people being leeches, you gotta kinda give knowledge still, but you kinda gotta stay bundled up. Um, another thing I would say is find as many mentors as possible. Don't just have one mentor, get as many as you can because each mentor helps you in different aspects. I probably have about, I wanna say about seven mentors, seven solid mentors. I know I could call, pull a favor, um, do this, do that, give me advice, you know, I can kick it with, hang with. Um, so them be the things is also stay in discipline. Being disciplined with yourself is very, very key. I would say if you don't reach your full goal, don't reward yourself. So. Let's say a goal is to jump three feet and you only jump one and a half. You know, don't reward yourself for jumping one and a half and say you almost made it. If you don't reach that goal, don't reward yourself. That'll help strengthen you as a business owner and even as a photographer when you're doing something. Okay, so the top three skills you think people need to be a photographer? Top three skills for photography. That's a great question. Patience. Customer service skills, adaptability. Patience, customer service skills, and adaptability would be my top three. Patience, because you gotta deal with clients. You have to deal with, sometimes even yourself, honestly, because I do myself all the time, having patience, teaching people. But me teaching is kind of like building a structure for my business. Um, accountability, I would say is one, I didn't say that one, but holding yourself accountable and holding your team accountable would be another one. Yeah, them three. Okay, so I just heard you say team, so you have a team, because I had a question on here as far as how did you create your fan base for your team? Mm -hmm. Never knew you had a team. 
So, that's gonna be a question later on. But um, I got you. the next question was, uh, any legal forms that you have or wanna tell anybody else to get or to avoid yeah. getting in this business? Uh, can you cuss on here? Hmm? Can you cuss on here? Oh yeah, do that. I mean my full self. Uh, honestly, you need to get some fucking renter's insurance, honestly. If anything's break, if anybody fall, because people, clients are very quick to sue or they very quick to ask for their money back. So renter's insurance, I would say if you were a photographer or anybody traveling, is very inexpensive. Like it don't run you for nothing a month, depending on how much stuff you have. Renter's insurance, um, invest into a legal shield. So legal shield is like a, a, le a attorney for you. It's like a company that does attorney. I have legal shield for any business document. They review all business documents. Um, they're like attorney, I can call with questions. I can make a will with them. Um, it's a lot of things you can do with legal shield. Another thing I would do is have firm non-refundable deposit policies as a photographer and be firm on it, but always offer something else if they can't get their deposit. Uh, another thing I will offer it, say is you really should have your policies together as far as booking. Um, procedures as well if you have a team uh enforcing things like COVID-19 would be good so I would say like legal shield and renter's insurance if you don't have anything else just get renter's insurance like please like that's the only thing I can stress is to get renter's insurance good okay um the most satisfying moment in your business or anything that just you know what I'm saying like mm. that made you like real happy Damn. like this is you know what I'm saying? Good. Okay. Like for your business. Okay, okay. So I actually had somebody asked me this question. They asked me, was getting the studio the most satisfying moment? And I told them no. I think the most satisfying moment that made me most happy was when I was living with my mom and I was working for Little Caesars. I didn't really have a uh established photography career. I was doing yacht shoots downtown for forty dollars clothing brand shoots, all type of stuff. And I remember, and this is no shade to my mom when I say this, I love her to death. Uh, I remember I was working for Little Caesars and I was coming home to get my hair done and I met this one guy. And he met me at the door as a white guy. And he was like, yeah, you know, it's your mom home, you know. You guys gonna be getting evicted on like Thursday or Friday, mind you, it's Tuesday. So I don't really know what eviction is. I'm in the 10th grade and it was kind of crazy that he met me. I don't know if it was a guy, but he kind of met me at the door. I was going in the house. Next day, he come back to check on us. Same white guy. He met me again. Like, this is literally me walking to the house, and this is the second time he's meeting me walking to the house. I don't know if he knew, like, my schedule or, like, he kind of knew what was going on, but he met me again and said, okay, if y'all don't pay X, Y, and Z by Thursday, y'all going to be out. It's Tuesday now. So I called my mom. She's saying like, yeah, you know, your auntie gonna pay this, pay that. I'm like, all right, cool, we good. So I come Wednesday and the guy come knocking on the door again. And I'm sitting in the house chilling. My mom was gone. And he like, you know, your mom back. I'm like, no. Nah. She like, y'all owe this amount of money in rent. I'm not gonna put it on public, but y'all owe this amount of money in rent. And if you don't pay, you're gonna get evicted tomorrow. So mind you, it's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. I'm in 10th grade, I don't know what eviction is. I'm just like hustling, heat press downstairs in the basement. I mean, I got clothes, t-shirts. I'm talking about, I was banging. I was getting orders after orders after orders. And a guy coming in and telling us like, we about to get evicted the next day was kind of crazy to me after my mom said it was gonna get handled. So I'm calling her and she didn't answer. I called my grandma like, you know, we about to get evicted. My life, what I'm supposed to do on my, my mom's side. She told me that my mom was with my granddad. Call my other grandma, like, grandma, I need you to come get me, get all my stuff. Mind you, I had to go to work that same day, probably like two, three hours after. So um, I hung up and I just started crying for some reason, like just out of nowhere. I don't know why, but I'm taking all my stuff from downstairs. I got heat press, clothing racks, t shirts. I'm talking, I got jumpsuits, swimsuits. I had everything, vinyl. And I'm walking up the stairs and I'm putting everything in the front. So it's kind of like, I was putting everything in the front, the couches in the back. I sat on the couch waiting on my grandma to come get me. Still got to go to work in my work uniform at Little Caesars. And my mom came in the door and I didn't talk to her. 
at all. Like she wasn't answering me that day or nothing. She came in the door, she walked in. It's like she had to walk right past me to go upstairs. She walked in, she looked at me, I looked at her and she went upstairs. And I was just sitting there like, I'm in the 10th grade. You know, we about to get evicted. I don't know what to do. I bust out crying again. So I'm like, damn, what the fuck? And my grandma finally came in that day. I think the week later, um, I quit football that day. I quit football that same day. Um, I quit Little Caesars the next week um, after that. And I just been doing photography then. So I think the most, now I forgot the question. I'm getting so deep in my story. The most uh, heartfelt moment was me leaving my job in order to pursue my dream. Because to this day, my mom hasn't stepped in this building. My dad hasn't stepped in this building. My dad hasn't told me congratulations. I love my dad. My mom hasn't told me congratulations. I don't love my mom. So it's not one moment that keeps me going or that's like happy for me. It's like every day knowing that, I'm not gonna say they don't support me, but every day knowing that like people that you think should support you, don't support you, keeps me going. Like the negative is what keeps me going because I have a space that I have to provide with. My studio is bigger than my house that I don't even be at barely. So it's like these moments that I'm thinking about it. I'm kind of getting weak right now talking about these moments. These moments is so crazy. Just thinking about this shit, dog. Cause I don't have no moment. Every day is a moment for me. Everything I do is a moment. Everybody I meet is a moment. Like if I don't help somebody when I meet them, I feel like I didn't accomplish anything. So that's my answer to that question. I don't have a moment. It's just every day. Yeah, every day, yeah, every day. <laughs> You're right.